Hello, Zazzleites, and welcome back to our Satisfactory Let's Play. Uh, let's see, I wanted to start here, I was actually considering starting at our new factory, but I wanted to start here and show you guys that we finished two of our temporary setups here. So two of our uh, space elevator parts are done, and we still have one more to get started. So I think we'll do that at the end of the episode, because frankly right now I just don't have the power to do it. That's part of the reason we built this new factory. So I set up a new hyper tube. It's going to take us all the way over to the new factory, and I'm going to show you along the way something else I did in prep for uh, nuclear. So we are going to, well, for actually plutonium, we're going to need nitric acid. So that's something else I did in between episodes was crunch a ton of numbers and figure out exactly what we're going to need. So uh, we are going to need some nitric acid, which means we're going to need a little bit more nitrogen than we currently were getting. So uh, I power started these, the extractor over here, and uh, you'll see it as we go by, and I set up more packagers, so we're now extracting and packaging 3,000 nitrogen a minute, compared to the 1,200 a minute that we were doing, which is actually overkill, more than we need for the rest of the playthrough even, so uh, getting it done, no getting it out of the way, and you know, figure why not, it's only three power shards and a few packagers. And this thing uh, slows down quite a bit here, uphill, but the uphill stuff is almost done. I like how we can just go right through the poison gas and the hyper tube, that's pretty cool. I wasn't sure about that when I laid this down, but it does work. And right up this hill here is our nitrogen setup. So like you can see, I power shared it, hooked up each of these extractors is only going to one line now. Each one line is going to a packager for a total of six or 3,000 nitrogen gas being packaged a minute. And then over here towards the northern forest, not too far down this way, is a uh, kind of right on the border of the northern forest and the red forest is the perfect location for everything that we needed right here. And I'll try to explain that. There's one, there's a big water, big lake there. So there's 1,200 oil, which was just enough for all the circuit boards we're going to need to make. For all the rubber and petroleum coke we need to make for the circuit boards. Plus, like I said before, we need more power. So uh, the two 600 lines of petroleum coke we need to make, I'm making. But I'm also making diluted fuel for our fuel generators. So you can see a factory coming in over here after we get through this gas, poison gas. And like I said, there's a big thing of water here. Actually, let's just... I haven't turned any of this on yet, by the way, so it's just sitting here idle. I'm kind of actually worried about turning it on. Uh, I'm not sure if, even with our power storage, if we'll blow a fuse or not. Maybe, maybe not. It's kind of right on the edge. So see all the power generators up there though so if we can get this to run for a while it'll start all those power generators and then eventually we'll have plenty of power and that'll be all the power that we need for nuclear so to set up that nuclear setup that I want to set up is going to take an enormous amount of power I didn't I wanted to I really wanted to get through this whole playthrough without doing the fuel generator thing but I kind of didn't have a choice at this point so here's our four oil nodes for a total of 1200 a minute uh, two normal nodes and one pure node back there. So, like I said, it's only 1,200 a minute, but we're turning, taking that 1,200 a minute into 40 refineries in here. I don't want to fly in there yet because I haven't turned it on, so the power is not hooked up in there. But uh, there's 40 refineries turning that into rubber and heavy oil residue. And there's 10 more refineries turning the heavy oil residue into petroleum coke. And there's eight blenders in here turning using water heavy oil residue to make diluted fuel and then on the second floor we're making the circuit boards on this half of the factory and i also squeezed in with the extra room we had in there i squeezed in some more fuel generators and i still had to power start quite a few to use up all the fuel but uh, we're making all of our circuit boards up there and then over there on the end i'll show you that there's water coming in for uh, our diluted fuel and there's drone port set up up over there for circuit boards and then on the third floor is that whole roof is just nothing but 
fuel generators. So I'll show you all that once we get it turned on. But then on this side of this oil pipeline, since this location is central to four normal sulfur nodes, I bust the sulfur back here. One from that side and then two from over here. And we're making 1,450 sulfuric acid here a minute, which is what we'll need for both uranium and plutonium processing. And then over here we have drone, uh, drone port for batteries and another drone port for our sulfuric acid after we package it. So we have 29 more refineries on this side making sulfuric acid and then 38 packages, I believe, on this side making or packaging the sulfuric acid to go out to the drone port. So the only thing really, after explaining all that, the only thing really left to do is just to turn it on and see how bad I screwed everything up because nothing has been ran in here yet. Uh, the only thing I did, I hooked up, I think, these three water extractors at one point because while I was running power, I just kind of accidentally did it. But nothing else has had power yet, so... Let's turn it on and see how it goes. See where we're at with our power? We're well above our uh, production. Our max consumption jumped way up. But our battery power is working, so as long as as long as some fuel gets to those fuel generators before the battery runs out, which obviously looks like we got plenty of battery time. We should be okay. But as these start getting oil and then start getting water and everything else to start turning on, more and more machines are going to turn on and this is just going to climb and climb. So I'm really hoping some fuel gets up to those generators fairly soon. So we got sulfuric acid over here. Let's start with this set. So 29 uh, refineries. 29 refineries making sulfuric acid. 14. 1450 per minute and then they're all yeah they all bus up here and then there's one 300 line down there there's a 600 line here and a 550 line here all going upstairs to be packaged so that's pretty simple though pretty simple setup just uh i don't know it really wasn't hard at all but we have water for those coming out this side so we got water refineries here, or water extractors here, five here, and then we got five more over here, and then we had the three on the other side that I showed you, and that's feeding just for sulfuric acid here. So that's what all these water extractors are doing. And then we'll look at the other side of the uh, oil line here, and the other side is the rubber and... Uh, petroleum coke so we have 40 refineries here all just making rubber and heavy oil residue okay. so all that rubber and heavy oil residue is going up on this side of the building or all well we have 10 more refineries making petroleum coke so the rubber and the petroleum coke is going up on this side of the building and we also have the uh, half of our heavy oil residue coming into these eight blenders making fuel and then we have water extractors out here for these blenders to make diluted fuel. And then these diluted fuel are going up here to the very top four. And why is that pump red? That pump should not be red. Ah, it doesn't look like I hooked up power to it. That would do it. Hmm. Let's grab it here, I suppose. There. there we go, now the pump's green. So it should be pumping it upstairs to the fuel generators. Like I said, we want to get those turned on as soon as possible. Is this pump pumping? Yeah, that pump's already green. Good deal. Alright, so like I was saying, these uh, water extractors out here are feeding these blenders that are making our diluted fuel. And that is floor one. We'll go up to floor two. I'm assuming some, some of this stuff just has to, uh, not getting crude. Why wouldn't it be getting crude? Maybe it's just not, hasn't pumped down here this far yet. I'm assuming, I'm using the overflow method like always, so hopefully, uh, it will eventually overflow down here. Get the crude down there. We 
got two 600 lines of crude oil coming in. These each use 30, so we should be able to run 20 of these off of each 600 line. I don't know, we'll come back and check on that a little later. Let's go upstairs to the second floor first. Okay, second floor. Start on the sulfur gas inside again. So like I said, just 38 packages in here. Packaging. Sulfuric acid. Now this is interesting because 1,450 sulfuric acid, it only packages... 40 sulfuric acid is only two packaged sulfuric acid, so it's basically 20 per package. So by the time we package all this, we only need like something like 75 and a half uh, packages per minute. And uh, we're getting that. We're getting, we should be getting right around 80 packages per minute. I thought I put a door here. Maybe I didn't. Let's just throw a door in here. There we go. So anyway, this package sulfuric acid is coming out here to this drone port. And then it'll be bringing back empty containers. Now I have a ton of empty containers in my inventory just so I can throw them in here. As the machines fill up with the containers, it's going to use quite a bit. Yeah, I'll just come back later and throw those in. But, that's the rough idea for the sulfuric acid. And then it just comes out here to the drone port. And then we can pick it up from the drone. This is just a battery supply. But we can pick up our sulfuric acid from here and take it over to our uranium or to our plutonium, either one. So, sulfuric acid check done. Which is a very nice thing to say. One more thing off my checklist, which is a pretty extensive checklist, to be honest with you, that needs to be done for nuclear and plutonium setups. So now, like I was saying earlier, we had our petroleum coke and our rubber coming up over here. And then uh, we have two different rubber lines merging here to run down here for our circuit boards. And I'm really not understanding why it's not pumping out a lot more rubber. It should be. So we'll need to go downstairs and check that out eventually. And then we have our petroleum coke coming up. Yes, right here. Oh, we're getting petroleum coke, so we should definitely be getting rubber. Much more rubber than we're getting. But, assuming that I did all the you know, calculations correctly. And then I have a mirror of this set up on this side. So the 20 refineries on this side making rubber are coming up on this side, and the 20 refineries on this side are coming up on this side. Then the five refineries making petroleum go on this side coming up on this side, and same on that side. So it's just a mirror setup, left and right. And uh, we should be, like again, assuming I did all my calculations correctly, we should be making 130 circuit boards per minute. So all of this is just really to make 130 circuit boards per minute. And again, it is the overflow, so I'm hoping this will, you know, eventually fill itself out. And like I said, we're using the alternate recipe that uses rubber and petroleum coke. Yeah. Why not use that 1200 oil? And then uh, the key, though, if everything is running correctly, because we're just making just slightly more rubber and petroleum coke than we're going to need. So these last two splitters down here I set up as smart splitters for this and on the same on the other side. So that it overflows here into an awesome sink or overflows here into an awesome sink. And the same on the other side. So if we get extra oil or if we get extra rubber, we get extra petroleum coke, which like I said, there should just be slightly more than we need on both sides. But I don't ever want the machines downstairs to shut up and stop making heavy oil residue to stop making fuel to run our fuel generators so we should with these four awesome sinks be able to keep that from ever happening and then like I said I filled up the rest of this area with just fuel generators because there wasn't enough room upstairs and I power started all of them uh, on this side and I power started a bunch on the other side too just to use up all the fuel that we should need or are going to use so that's the second floor, and I'll take you guys up to the roof just to show you the power generators. 
I didn't see any red lights. I saw some yellow lights because stuff aren't being fed yet. I did red lights here. No power. Did I hook it up to power? I'm fairly certain I did. Or is it just because it's not running? It needs fuel. Look, our power production has went up quite a bit, but still not as high as we need to go. Nowhere near as high as we need to go, so it's not getting the fuel that it should be getting. Interesting. Okay, did I not put pumps on the fuel, maybe? That's possible. Alright, let's uh, go up to the top floor, though, see what's going on up here. And this is just the roof with all these fuel generators. So the four blenders on this side are feeding this entire line of fuel generators. And like I said, I had to power start quite a few of them to actually use it all. But it is, uh, it's only 400 fuel coming down the central line, though, so it shouldn't have any issue getting to all the way to the end. And then the same thing on this side. We have 400 fuel coming up on this side, going down this line. Because this side of the roof is smaller, that's I took that line down, and that's what's feeding those inside reactors. Okay, so this is full on fuel, so I'm assuming as these fill up, it'll move further down. Now, I had to use two pumps on this side, so maybe that's what's wrong on the other side. Is it not? Both pumps not on? No, nope, both pumps are on. It looks like it's getting plenty of fuel. Just hasn't filled everything up all the way down yet, apparently. Yeah, these are getting fuel. literally turning on as I fly down here. These just don't have fuel yet. This one had fuel for a second. Now each of these generators use 10 fuel per minute, or 12 fuel per minute. Right, so while I was up here, I almost forgot to show you guys. We have another battery supply port over here just to bring batteries for this port. I could have ran it all the way from down there over here, but I honestly, it was just easier to throw down the drone port. And then our circuit boards come up here and get stored here, ready to be taken to our main base. So I need to set up a drone port at our main base to fly over here and get the circuit boards, but that's not an issue. So... Now, if this does back up, that's what those awesome sinks down there are for. So, even if the circuit boards back up and none of these are producing, all this rubber and petroleum coke would just dump into the awesome sinks until this stuff starts back up again. At least I'm hoping. Assuming I hooked everything up correctly. Some of these still are not on. Which leads me to be, we're not getting the rubber or petroleum coke that we should be getting downstairs. Are these just full? These are waiting on empty canisters. Like I said, that was actually a lot of machines that each held like 100 canisters apiece. Just that, yeah, that thing's full already. Yeah, we're good on sulfuric gas. See, are we getting are all the refineries on downstairs yet? Still got a few yellow lights here. Still showing waiting on fuel or for oil. It should not. Oil should be getting down here, no problem. This one's barely got enough oil. I did power shard those, I think. Let, let me check and make sure I power sharded the oil. Yep, 
There are Mark II pipes the whole way, I believe. That one's power started. That was power started. 300 also. Those two are combining in that hot pipe, yes. And then this one's power started at 600 a minute, so that's the bottom pipe. So we should be getting 1200 a minute in there. Why is this flow rate so low? This one's 600 a minute. Where's this one? Is it because of the elevation? It's not even running, so it's not getting to where it... Okay, I guess we're going to have to put some pumps on these guys. So... Logistics. Good, I got the stuff at least. There's the power hook up. There it is. See if that makes a difference. There we go. That's much better. That means I'm also going to need a pump on this one over here, though. Uh, I don't know, actually. It's showing a decent flow rate, but that might be actually pumping down here, not up. I'm going to go ahead and put a pump on this side. Probably, maybe don't need it, but I'm going to do it anyway, just in case. Shouldn't need it, but we'll see. Okay, so this pipe now has a flow rate of 600. Good deal. And then this bottom pipe always had a flow rate of 600. Still a little low, though. Okay, let's see if everything's getting oil now, though. Looks like we're getting some more green lights down here. Good deal. Man, I wish all problems were that easy to solve. I'm assuming all these are just backed up with sulfuric acid. I don't see any red lights, so. Yep. Okay. Okay, these are all going green eventually. Got down here yet. Is this side completely turned on? Yeah, this side's completely turned on. This is the one that already had 600 in the pipe. So the oil will get down here eventually. On that side, now that it's got 600. Plenty of residue for these, uh, waiting on water? We should not be waiting on water, we should be overproducing water. Let's go check that out. And this, uh, middle pipe is a water pipe, and it looks like it's completely full. This top pipe, however, is not, so it must be a... Elevation issue again. Yeah.
Yeah, it's not pumping now. Alright, great. Well, that means we're going to end up putting a pump on each one of these four pipes here. So, we'll just use a Mark 1 pump here. Now we should in this tie pipe have a full rate of almost 600 hexing. Then the lower pipes are already good, right? Yep. Okay, so it's just the pipe a little bit too high, I suppose. Okay, it looks like we got full water supply. Then are these on now? Still not no pull. At least they're running now, off and on. So eventually that oil should build, build up all the way down here, then. Just like that said. All right, now let's go back up to the uh, second floor and see if all the circuit board machines are on now that this is producing the right amount of or rubber and petroleum coat. Awesome, so it looks like we just got one yellow light here, so those are starting to overflow. And no yellow lights on this side, which makes sense because this side's been running good the whole time. So as you can see, we're getting just slightly more than we need. So eventually this will fill up, and then the overflow from these should go over here to these awesome things. Well, a bunch of these just went yellow all of a sudden. Get the petroleum coat, just waiting on the rubber. Well, at least it looks like we're getting some rubber now, fair amount. This side's getting the right amount, it should be 200 per line. It should be a total of 400 rubber coming. We know that this side's good because that side's completely filling up. Looks like it's a, roughly the same amount. There we go, now we got all green notes. Still waiting on rubber down here today. Anyway, it should overflow at some point. Get going. Now let's check these. And still some of these are still waiting on fuel. Some of them are turned on. This one's turned on. Our power is finally getting up there. Still not close to our max consumption yet, though. We want our production, that gray line, we want our production line to be above our blue line, which is our max. I'm hoping when all these turn on, it will. Well, at least we know all the uh, ones upstairs should be turned on by now. Those on that side are turned on. And yeah, this looks like there's a couple down here that are kind of getting power or getting oil fuel and they're not getting fuel.
I'm going to turn it off and on yet. Eventually, that should all overflow so these stay running constantly. If that's not the case and I screwed up my calculation or something, I can always just come back here and take a power start out of a couple of these and it should be good. But for now, anyway, eventually this fuel should back up all the way down there and those should stay running constantly. And the same on this side. The, all these should run constantly and then downstairs should run constantly. But I think this just is going to take time to get built up, guys. So... I'm going to uh, head back to the base, and I think we're going to set up, now that we have power, and we should be getting more power soon. So now that our power is, well, it's not above our max consumption, but it is above our production, actually. There are our normal, what we're consuming right now. So now that our power is back up to a decent level again, I'm going to go back to the base and start those particle accelerators to get that last step of the space elevator done. Okay guys, we're back over here at the base. So I'm gonna hop right straight down here. Man, I love this hover pack. So right in here is where we're making our copper ingots. So actually I should just look, let's see. Put down I think it's constructor that will turn copper ingots into copper dust. Copper powder, okay. Yes, it just takes copper ingots to make copper powder. And I believe we need... I can't remember what we need. We'll put down a particle accelerator. But now I need some cooling units and some electromagnetic control rods. So I have to go get those. And unfortunately, I don't have a storage container down here for electromagnetic control rods. I never really thought I would need them. Probably should have thought better of that, but I can run one down here at a later date. I do still have some empty storage things down here. Cooling units we needed. Grab some of those. I think these are electromagnetic control rods right here. Yes. So just grab some of these. And like I said, I can just pipe those down here to storage because we have plenty of open storage things. Not plenty, but a few. There's one on this side and just a couple on this side that aren't being used. Know that makes 50 copper dust, copper powder. Man, this thing's huge. Let's look at that. Yeah, I think it's big. First particle accelerator, guys. Kind of cool. Okay, so this makes our nuclear pasta, is what it's called. And it takes 200 copper powders, and we'll need four, well, 100 per minute. So we'll need two of those constructors, or just one overclocked. And one pressure conversion cube, which we have upstairs to make 0.5 nuclear pasta per minute. That's not good. Hmm. This can be overclocked, but look, it uses 500 to 1500 megawatts now. Imagine what it would use overclocked. That's unreal. So I'm thinking we should probably build four of these to make these nuclear pastas. And maybe, maybe we'll just overclock one. We'll just build one and overclock it and build some constructors. So I'm going to build the constructors in here though temporarily since there's a temporary setup. Then we can bring the line right off of here.
Didn't exactly line that up very good, did I? Okay, set up the extractor. Actually, we're gonna. Yeah, if we're gonna overclock, yeah, we're gonna want two of these. Sit down where I want you. There we go. Of course, it didn't line up. That'd be too easy. That way. Works smarter, not harder, right? the end feeds right here yeah that'll work okay so we'll put a merger here it could come this direction Ugly, but we don't really care. This is all temporary. Oh, copper dust. Copper powder. Do I have any power shards on me? No, I'll have to go upstairs and get some power shards. This is going to make the nuclear pasta, so we need pressure conversion cube, so we'll need a container. that backwards. No, I did that right. Right into there. Alright, so I'm going to go up and get some power surge for these, this, and then some pressure conversion cubes. Oh, oh shift. Yeah, that'll make me go faster. I used a lot of those power shards on, uh, I have done some things like power shard or, or put down our tier 3 miners and then make sure they were fully power sharded and there's only, I need to set one down on the Ethereum over there and the two ports over there and the bauxite way off in the distance. Which by the way guys, next episode is going to be bauxite and aluminum production. I'm going to revamp our whole aluminum production. So that's next episode, but I wanted to get this done this episode and at least get it started. Well, like I said, I used a lot in those power generators, so we're down to 79. I haven't really been slug hunting, but, you know, I just, the ones I picked up while we were uh, out getting hard drives. Oh, I still need pressure conversion cubes. Need a thousand of these. One, two, three, four. Eight
Okay, if this is fully overclocked. Two hundred fifty percent. It's going to need two hundred fifty copper powder a minute. This makes fifty. So should be one hundred twenty-five. Yes, two of these making one hundred twenty-five. Okay. And we'll dump our conversion cubes. Okay, let's watch this thing run for the first time. Little ring turned on. Middle ring is spinning up. I'm kind of half tempted to fly through there, but I'll look at all that lightning going in there. I wonder if it would kill me. Realistically, obviously it would, but... Yeah, that thing's pretty cool, isn't it? Alright, so I put that power thing right in the wrong place. Let's just upgrade this. There we go. Run another one over here. Here over to there. I'm gonna fuck up some course. We'll upgrade this one too. Yeah. Let me get rid of this one. And we'll set a container out here. Well, doesn't want to line up naturally to that one. And we'll put a Let's just put a Mark 1 belt in here so we can watch it go by real slow. And we use one of these in a very long time. There's our nuclear pasta. Oops. Didn't actually mean to pick it up. Okay, so we only need a thousand of those. And I think we need a right around two thousand more of these. Let's see, we got almost a thousand in here, so we'll need two thousand more after this thousand here. So we're about halfway done with this step. And I did add another machine over here, which I'm having issues with cable right now, so now once all that stuff in there backs up because I had to dump a ton of computers and supercomputers and stuff in here so that's eating actually replacing all that's eating up all the cable that was supplying me so but once uh once all that builds back up this cable will supply all these three solid and we'll get back to full production on this line how much power is this using Wow, 2166 to 6498. That is a lot. To get 1.25 per minute. And our copper dust is it. Copper powder is not going to best enough. Why are our, cop our copper ingots should be coming like crazy? Uh, you know what? I should have put the splitter down there, actually. Hmm. Alright. This is temporary. Good thing I checked stuff like that, right? 
There we go. Now we should be getting like 700 of these a minute instead of three something. Wow, each of these machines takes 750 per minute. Wow. Okay. We're going to be using our entire copper line just to feed these two machines for a while. More than our entire copper line. Uh, takes an entire copper line to feed one of these machines. 750 per minute. Wow. Okay, it looks like that'll just be until those back up. No? Yeah, I don't know. That's a lot. We'll watch one more of these come out of here. It's kind of cool. It has like a little shield around it, a little force field. Okay. But yes, it's one pressure reduction cube to one. Yeah, so we have a thousand of those. So when those run out, we know this is done. We'll have a thousand new more pasta. It's going to take a while to get all that copper powder. I didn't realize how... That's amazing. I could, I suppose, tap into that other copper line. Speed that up. Put, say, a merger down there. It's going to get messy quick. And then put another splitter up here. And then run a line from there out here. Can't make it straight for some reason. Oh well. Well that'd be crooked. And then Oh man, really? There we go. Well, actually, both of these lines are 780 lines of copper ingots, but they get split in half through a splitter. I didn't even think about that, so it actually is going to take two of these to split off. Split two 720, or 780 lines in half, and you'll get basically a 780 line going this way, which is still only going to feed one of these machines a minute, so it's still going to be slow. Wow. But we sped it up considerably. Not considerably enough, but considerably. Alright guys, I think that's going to be it for this episode. So, uh, like I said, next episode we are going to completely the revamp our aluminum system. So inside, the biggest bottleneck in this factory is definitely aluminum casing. So... We are going to, one, I have to, in between episodes, I'll go do that. I'll, I'll put our uh, Miner Mark III on our bauxite node, and I also, not too far from that bauxite node is another bauxite node, so I'm going to run it down past the one we already have and to the train station so that we can bring in two 780 lines of bauxite to this factory. With the alternate recipes and the way they work, we're just going to double our current production but that's all we need so that's the plan so uh next episode we are going to with the alternate recipes redo that and that's where we're that petroleum coke upstairs is going to come down to so got lots to do next episode and i'm going to try i'm going to do that the same way i did the previous aluminum because i know a lot of you guys have problems with aluminum setups so i'm going to show you the whole setup start to finish so uh that'll be next episode guys and we're going to end it here and thanks for watching and i will see you around
Hey guys, before we end the episode, let's see how many people we can get to click that subscribe button. Right there in the middle of the screen where it's flashing. Hey, good job. There's one. And another. Hey, you guys are getting it. Alright, that's enough of that. I'm not greedy. I want to thank you guys for watching the episode, and I will see you in the next video.